Oh, hi. It's lovely to be here. Um, yes, my name is Jen Bristol. I am a stand-up comedian. I'm also uh, a mother. That's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Um, but I'm the other mother. Yeah? Because that, that's how it works with lesbos. There's two of us. Um, just in case there's any confusion, I'll explain. I'm the non-biological mum, and my girlfriend is the biological mum. And that is how we refer to each other at home. <laughs> like we're boxes of detergent. <laughs> She's personal, I'm Daz. It's just how we do it. <laughs> Hard work, isn't it? Hard work, being a parent. It's like a full-time job. You know, sometimes I hear people moaning about their job. They're like, oh, God, what do you do? Oh, was it data entry for an electrical company in Rygate? Sounds wicked. Can I come? <laughs> Sounds like a break from this. Of course it's hard work. There's a lot of responsibility bringing up children, isn't it? I'm not talking about the practical responsibility. Anyone can get a handle on that. I'm talking about the emotional responsibility. It's overwhelming, isn't it? The things you have to think about as a parent. Because I, I want to bring up my... I've got two boys. They're four twins. And I want to bring up my sons to be kind, happy, compassionate men that understand and appreciate their own privilege. You know, I want to be able to convey complex and important ideas around intersectionality, empathy, uh, consent. But I can't even get them to eat broccoli. <laughs> so I don't think I'm up to the job. I think the catalyst for me thinking about all of these things was when um, my mother uh, moved in with me here in Brighton. Um, uh, she's buying a place here, so my Spanish mum, and she said to me, Jennifer, I will just stay for a short time. I will not stay for very long, Jennifer. I will blend into the background. I will help with the children, Jennifer. Maybe we can spend time together. Maybe we can be friends. <laughs> she moved in on the 12th of January. <laughs> it has been 10 months. I tell you what I find interesting when I tell people that my mum is living with me, I get a very different, different response uh, from men uh, than I get from women. Um, when I tell men that my mum is uh, living with me, the response is nearly always like this. Oh. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I love my mum. <laughs> but when I tell women, the response is very different. It's more like this. Bloody hell, mate, I'd kill myself. How are you going to survive that? You're never going to survive that. You're going to have to drink till you're dead. You'll never get out alive. There might be some men in the room here this afternoon, a bit confused. You're not sure what I'm talking about. Just to explain, uh, you have a very different relationship with your mum to the one that we have. Okay, mothers and sons, just different from mothers and daughters. Now, I realise I'm making a generalisation here, but I think on the whole, it holds. And... Uh, if I was to encapsulate that relationship, mothers and sons, yeah, it would be like this. Mummy loves you very much. No, darling, you don't do anything because mummy will do it for you. <laughs> no, what did I say? Sit down, you silly thing. Now, listen, you go out and achieve and do whatever you want because mummy believes in you. Now, kisses for my special boy. Mothers and daughters, a bit more like this. You look fat in that. <laughs> I'm just saying there's a bit more judgment, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and I don't want to mollycoddle my sons. Do you know, I don't want to do that. I want to bring up my sons as I would a daughter. <laughs> With a huge amount of love, but also an incredible amount of passive aggression and judgment as I project all of my fulfilled and unfulfilled dreams onto them and watch as they disappoint me over and over and over again. <laughs> of course, uh, as a society, as a mother, as a mother, as a mother, as a mother, <laughs> everything I say carries more weight now. As a mother. It's really hard to say that without sounding like you write for the Daily Mail, doesn't it? As a mother. 
Of course we love our daughters. Of course we do. We love our daughters. But we adore our sons. And I don't think I was aware of this as a phenomena until my girlfriend got pregnant. And of course, if pregnant women are public property, that's what happens. Uh, people think that they can touch you, talk to you, ask you intrusive questions. Do you know what you're having? Do you know what's happening inside there? What are you having? Do you know what you're having? What's going on inside there? I'm going to hazard a guess that it's a baby. <laughs> Fortunately, I wasn't the one that got pregnant. It was my girlfriend, and she's much better at chit-chat than I am. So... Um, on this one occasion when this woman asked, what are we having? My girlfriend replied, as she normally did, twin boys. And I believe that this woman's response was disproportionate to the answer that my girlfriend gave. I mean, literally, she lost it. She was like, oh, my God! Oh, my God, that's amazing! What are you having two boys? That's incredible! That's the dream team! No, that's what you want, two boys. Oh, that's fantastic. I've got one of each. My daughter is a nightmare. Do you know what I mean? You never know what they're thinking. Girls are so manipulative, but boys are lovely. They're so simple. They're adorable. Oh, my God, two boys. Oh, my God, I'm so happy for you. Do you know what? That is brilliant because boys are better. <laughs> a woman said that to me. Another woman in front of another woman. <laughs> a woman <laughs> said, boys are better to me. Another woman in front of another woman and her daughter. I know. I, I know. Do you know what I felt like saying to her? I felt like saying to her, sweetheart. Do you see these two unborn boys in here? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, they're already a disappointment. Yeah. Because I wanted a daughter. Take a look at the haircut, sweetheart. That should be an indication as to how much I care about boys. I didn't say that. I went, are you going on holiday? Oh, that's lovely. I hope you have a wonderful time in Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> No one judges a woman harsher than another woman. Oh, God, the bar we set ourselves and each other. My goodness, the bar we set men is a lot lower, isn't it? It is. In fact, if that bar was a bar, it would be a Weatherspoons. <laughs> Even as a parent, especially as a parent, you can see that the way we judge mothers is very different from the way that we judge fathers as women. You know, I hear women saying this kind of stuff about dads. Isn't it lovely to see a father out with his children? <laughs> Don't you think it just warms the cockles? I just love to see a father making an effort with his children. Don't you think it's just wonderful to see a dad with his children? Isn't that the bare minimum requirement as a parent to stand next to your children? <laughs> Mothers, we don't get the same slack, do we? The way we judge mums. I've got a friend who doesn't even have children who had the gall to say this to me. Jane, don't you think it's terrible when you see mothers out with their children, but they're not looking at their children, they're looking at their phones? I just think it's really awful. Can you imagine being out with your kids and not looking at them, just looking at your phone? Do you know what? If I had a kid, I would have it literally velcroed to my face <laughs> so I could look at the child at all times. Of course they don't have children. You know they don't have children, because if they did, they wouldn't be saying anything as ridiculous as that. I'm like, mate, help yourself. Take these two out. Yeah, see how you get on. After three hours of having an off a discussion about the office politics of Paw Patrol, see if you don't want to have a cheeky look at Facebook. <laughs> Constantly being distracted by things that don't matter. Too busy judging each other. What was the last thing that we were told to care about that just doesn't really matter? It was the thigh gap, wasn't it? The thigh gap? How is that a thing? Because you know what happens, ladies, if your thighs rub together? Nothing! <laughs> Nothing happens because it doesn't matter! God, if like me, you've been in a relationship for longer than 12 years, you're delighted if anything's rubbing down there. <laughs> it's not the thigh gap we should be worrying about, is it? It's a gender pay gap. Sometimes, do you know what it feels like society's been telling women? That we should just be grateful. You know, you got the vote, 
We can't touch your tits in public no more! <laughs> what are you really moaning about? <laughs> Tell you what I'm moaning about, I'm moaning about my piece of the pie, mate. Yeah. Because I don't want 5%. I don't want 10%. I don't even want 25%. I want 50% of the pie. Why? Because I've earned it. And I'm not a token or a one-off or an anomaly. I'm a woman. And women make up 51% of the population. That's right, fellas. There's more of us than you. <laughs> so hand over my piece of the pie. You know that bit that you've got at the moment with the extra crush that, cr <laughs> crust that you didn't earn? Yeah, it's called the penis bonus. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm saying this as a gay woman, but I want that pristine portion of privileged penis premium. <laughs> and I want to be uh, uh, chowing down on your piece of pie. Sorry, not your piece of pie, my piece of pie, because it's not yours. It's never been yours, it's always been mine, and you're not handing over a piece of your pie, you're actually handing back my piece of pie that you took from me. So, give me my bloody pie back. <laughs> I'm a lesbian, that's a good thing, it's a positive thing. Yeah, uh, it means that I don't have to, you know, reach the same, I don't have the same societal expectations. Well, rather, society doesn't have those same expectations of me. In fact, I'm pretty sure society has no expectations of me. I've, I've lived my life as a gay woman pretty much under the radar, invisible. But there are advantages to that. It means I don't have to, you know, I don't have to care about the same gender norms. I can step outside of those. And now as a parent, I can do that not just for myself, but also for my children. And having two boys, I've got to be honest with you, that's, that's changed the way I think about a lot of things. No offence, fellas, but before I had sons, I didn't really think about you. <laughs> Not much, anyway. Just get out of my way, put the shelves up, stop talking. <laughs> think about things very differently now. Here's something I've started to think about differently. Um, I think we can all agree that we live in a patriarchal society. And I think we can agree that that's toxic for women. Well, I believe it's toxic for men. And here's why. Because if we live in a society where we are telling men and women that women aren't equal, what we're actually doing is telling men and women that women are worth less. That's what we're doing. We're telling men and women that women are worth less. Women are worthless. And if that's what we're doing as a society, then what we're actually doing is telling men and women that any attributes that you would associate with being a woman are less than. So you don't want to do those. You express yourself, cry, emotions. No, you don't want to do that because that's what birds do. What do we tell men when we want them to let off steam? Get in a boxing room, punch the living daylights out of each other. No, fella, you don't have to do that. Just be a normal person. Sit in front of the telly, watch five hours of Queer Eye, have a cry. <laughs> oh, you'll feel a lot better. So many words that get banded around, like a cult of masculinity and toxic masculinity as if we as a society aren't complicit in creating that. Because we are. From, from when they're built, from when we've got those sons, from when they're born. Yeah? And if we're pushing men into a corner, we're not giving them any opportunities to back out, then how can, we, how can we be surprised if they come out punching and screaming? Hmm? Men aren't born that way. Any mother of sons will tell you that. I've got two boys. They're four. And let me tell you, they are full-time emotors. They do not mind telling me how they feel every second of the day. <laughs> Mama, you gave me a blue bowl and I wanted a yellow bowl. Mama, there is dirt on my knee and I don't know what to do about it. Mama, please hold my hand because my poo poo is hurting me. <laughs> and long may it continue. Because until we tell our children, our boys, that emotions aren't gendered, Crying, expressing yourself. That's not a female thing, it's a human thing. And until we start doing that, we're not going to see a reduction in violence and sexual assault perpetrated against women. And we're not going to see a reduction in suicide in young men. We've got to start talking about this stuff. We've got to start communicating with our children. Not just at home, we've got to do it at school. After school, at scouts, at guides, whatever. We've got to do it there as well. I, I don't know about you, I, I couldn't care less if my kids could tie a knot or, or start a fire rubbing two twigs together. I'd much rather they learn they can't rub themselves up against somebody else without their express consent. Because consent is an afterthought, isn't it? Right now, something really awful has to happen before we really understand the implications. It's a bit like Brexit. 
Yes, a lot of people voted to leave. Yes, of course they did. But now halfway through the proceedings, they're thinking, I've changed my mind. Does that mean they still have to be screwed? Well, yes, as it turns out, it does. <laughs> Consent. I mean, th this is the other thing. We, we give our children mixed messages. I, I do it. I've done it in the past. Boys, give Auntie Sarah a kiss. No, I know you don't know her very well. She's a bit creepy and you'd rather play with your Lego. But give her a kiss anyway. Go on. No, not on the cheek, darling, on the lips. Why do we do that? Why do we tell our children to kiss strangers? You know, why do we enforce that on them? I mean, I, I wouldn't want that. John, John, come here, mate. You see Dave over there. Give him a kiss, mate. <laughs> no, no, not, not on the cheek, on the lips. Come on, do it properly. Of course we wouldn't want to do that. It's absolutely ridiculous, and yet we expect our children to do it. You know, I think also we're obsessed with being polite, aren't we, in this country? It's an you know, and I don't, but I don't know when kissing became an expression of politeness. I think we should bring back the high five. Yeah, it's, it's quick, isn't it? It's quick, it's easy, you're in, you're out. It's really hard to make a high five creepy. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's some fellas out there that would be able to do it if they really tried, but it's, it is pretty hard. And, you know, it's an acknowledgement, isn't it? That's what it is. And that's what tonight, here, this afternoon, if at the end you would like to recognise or acknowledge me with a round of applause, I would be absolutely delighted. At no point do I expect any of you to come up and try and snog me. Because <laughs> at the moment, what we're teaching our children from a very young age is that they have no agency around consent. They have no agency at all. Whether they like it or not, they've got to go ahead and do it. This kind of behaviour that we're teaching our children when they're young, boys and girls, you know, as they get older, society compounds that behaviour in two different ways. Boys learn that they can do whatever they want and they don't need consent, whilst girls learn that it doesn't matter how uncomfortable they feel in any given situation, they have to put up with it. Why is it the responsibility of women to mitigate the actions of men? Why is it the, why is the onus on women to make themselves safe? to make a man happy, to teach a man about something as fundamental as consent. As mothers, as mothers, what we are teaching our sons is that they need to be eternally mothered, even by the women that they are potentially violating. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not the best parent. I'm not saying that. I can't change the world. I can't. But maybe I could try to change my world by bringing up my boys differently. And then maybe if we can change this corner of the world, then maybe other people can do the same and we can make this entire planet slightly better to live in. My name's Jen Brester. Believe it or not, I am a stand-up comedian. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>